Hello everyone and welcome to Whitetail Driven Solutions YouTube channel. We are bringing you tips, strategies, and tactics to help you and your property be more successful. We not only invite you to subscribe to our channel, but also hit the notification button to be notified when we release new videos. Today we're out on a uh, Macosta County, Michigan parcel here that we had um, done some work on last year, did a couple of started a couple phases and implemented uh, two different food plots, started the bedding areas, got some trail systems and corridors, got the licking branches in for the customer. And today, um, after the year's inventory, after all the trail camera pictures have been turned in, looked over, um, and the design is uh, you know in that position where it's ready to be um, added on to. Came in today, and what I've got, what I've got is we've got a stand location that we wanted to um, get last year, and there wasn't a, a stand hung here. And after uh, looking at it in the winter here last year, I wasn't able to walk it in the winter. We started the project um, around spring green up and uh, late May there, and I wasn't, so I didn't have that uh, availability. Um, to, to do that which, which I do on most of my or some of my uh, client parcels anyway uh, we didn't have that opportunity to walk it last year now knowing it um, after the winter this year looking at what we have um, left over and from the fall and in the rubs and and uh, just found another um, right on one of the corridors one of the trails that we had from last year um, a, a, a real nice rub on a spruce tree um, six eight inch rub so Good location we're just coming in to enhance it but the the story behind this video guys so we're going to do some hinge cutting today i'm going to go over that but the the start of this whole process is you have to know where these stand locations are on a parcel last week here in macosta county walked in and all the bedding area is created on the edge of the food plot not not your first um, you know a doe bedding area fringes um i'm talking on the edge of the food plots and um I think it's a it's a combination of a lot of things. No disrespect towards the gentleman that did it, but um, they're setting what I see is they're they're setting the hunters up for failure. And the reason that is is you cannot possibly hunt them without getting busted. And I don't think um, you know the problem is a lot of guys that are that are out here um, doing these habitat improvements are guys that um, are hunting their own parcels wrong. And that sounds that sounds mean and and uh, whatever you want to take out of that, but when you're in the industry that I'm in and you, you're on these properties every day, you see these, you see these mistakes. And um, the mistakes that I see are, the, the issue is with the mistakes is they're not hunting them themselves. You have to be able to create a property and you have to be able to have that property hunt for somebody else. Like I said, anybody can hunt a, hunt a parcel for themselves, but can you create a property and be able to have somebody else hunt where you're not actually as a guide or or you're not actually hunting it yourself you're not actually taking that person right to the stand so you my my goal is is my my whole business is created around taking the guesswork out of this for the the clients making sure that's easy for them to hunt making sure that their their hunts are successful sits these high percentage um, percentage sits that you hear me talk about all the time anyway this situation here we had the tree last year it's just white pine right behind me you can see it's right on the edge of um so i'm looking uh, now I'm looking into the camera, which I'm looking to the east, so you guys are looking to the west. And the access to the farm um, is out on a road that runs north and south. And the food plot lays up in here, up the bench, up on top of the hill. That's where he's got a, we put an octagon blind up there for him last year so his kids could hunt on it with him. And um, then it drops down and you can see these cattails, all these two two separate cattails and they, they, they uh, two separate cattail marshes and they actually connect uh, together right there it's you can't get across it on foot it's a little bit wet still but on the end of it here is a creek system creek bottom uh, creek shelf and it runs the whole uh, width of the whole length of the property the property runs long east and west so what this is is it's a ridge system that comes down um, you can see it um, behind me here this is a high and dry ridge it's six eight feet ten feet higher and it's a point that sticks out connects to the creek shelf and we have another enhanced bedding area on the other side of it. So creating that, that hex, um, hex bedding area, that hex movement that I, that I like to design. So what we're doing here is this is the tree. 
So, you know, you start this process with the tree. I'm very confident that with a little legwork this summer by myself and the, and the, uh, and the client, I can get him in and out of here. And this is the tree that he needs to be. The sign is all tore up, trails within. Um, some of them are 10 yards, but they all flow. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to, we got this tree pinned now, and we're gonna go out in front of it, and we're gonna be able to hunt this wind. Uh, we're gonna be able to hunt this on a north, northeast, uh, east, um, northwest at times, depending on it's a mo morning. This this is what we're creating this sit for is mainly an evening, um, late October sit. That's the design around this, this uh, sit here. So we won't be coming into it early season and, and blowing stuff out of here. We're gonna wait till it's good and he's gonna get in here and, and uh, he's gonna kill a mature buck out of this these uh, one of these sits here. But anyway, where we're at here, guys, is we got the tree picked out. You have to be able to go through these designs and like I said, what I see is it's just go in, start cutting, and when you start cutting, then you pick the tree out later and you're way too close to the bedding areas, you can't get out. So this one here is I'm gonna turn around. So this is the tree behind us, white pine. And I'm going to turn around what you can see from eye level. You can see this ridge picks up behind it. 30 yards, 35 yards at the top of that ridge. And it's it's about a 20, 20 foot incline maybe to the top of it. So when you're up in the tree, you're going to be about eye level, maybe be able to see over it. The moral of the story is, guys, that there hides you from the bedding area. So you can come in from the west. You can be able to, we're going to be able to get him in and out of here undetected he's going to be able to get to this tree shimmy up this tree and a quiet sit and the bedding area is uh, the, the start of it's going to be about 80 to 100 yards 75 yards but it's over the top of this ridge so this ridge system is all is you know all protecting um, your is all protecting your sound and this thick dense cover that it's got you can see how thick it is here on the ground it's all you know absorbing that um, that loud uh, movement or you know hopefully that the key is don't be clanging banging around when you're climbing the stand but get him a stand hung in here and uh, get it trimmed out and uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the we're gonna start the bedding area right up here on top of the hill in an area that I'm gonna trim out right now I'm gonna go up here drag the sled up and we're gonna put it in an area that that is going to be the hub the center the center point the hub the corridor of the bedding area so it's going to be you know that 10 15 foot circle but that is going to be a spot we're going to have a licking branch that we had designed last year that licking branch is going to be held there so the deer come over the top of the hill from their bedding area over the top of this ridge down through this pinch point this crick shelf on the way up to food and they're going to filter right past him and the, the object is they're going to stop we're going to hold them there at that uh, licking branch perfect spot for he's got cell cams throw a cell cam in here and uh, just let it roll uh, over the top of it and then what we do is we're going to take that hub design that that licking branch is going to going to be in if you were to take your hand and use your palm as the uh, use your palm as the um, the hub and then it just looks just like a hand you're going to put that in the center and then all these corridors are going to run out from it and all the hinge cut work is going to be done in there it's just over probably it's uh, almost an acre some of it was enhanced last year like I said and we're just going to add to it now um, but that's that's the idea. So the moral of the story is you have to create these these uh, you have to create this. You have to design it. You have to have somebody that knows um, that you're you have to it has to be huntable. You have to be be able to get in and out of it. And if you just go in and he and you start the saws up and you start hacking and chopping and hacking and squirting and you start uh, hinge cutting these areas and they're too close. It's in the wrong area. You're doing nothing but benefiting your neighbors. And that's not that's not what we're what we're uh, what we're trying to do any of us are trying to do so we're going to get to this i'm going to go in and i'm going to show you i'm going to hang a ribbon on that tree we're going to come up here create that spot for that licking branch to tell you the truth we're going to have two licking branches here we're going to have one on the end of this ridge system we're going to have the other um right up here so these deer can come over the top of the hill and, and uh he's you know right in front of him all right, we got step two here accomplished. You can see what I did is this over big overhanging limb right here above us and uh, coming off this hardened maple. I just looked at it, make sure it's not going to uh, break within a year or two here. That's where this licking branch is gonna be uh, moved to or we're gonna add a licking branch right here. And you can see right behind, right straight behind that guys is that white pine. Perfect, right here. It's about a 
Uh, it's a little tighter, but it's about 20, 22 yards. I like to put them usually about 25, 27. But uh, it's right here, I think, where this needs to be. And uh, we're going to go from here. But that's the center of the hub. And what you want to do is you want to create these lines of movement. You want to create these corridors that all tie into and work with that location. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the pan or can of paint here. And we're going to start from this location. And we're going to draw... We're gonna make that hub design out of this so we know our center lines. We put the center lines in and then we're going to, um, it's all gonna funnel down to here, but this right now is not gonna be, it's not gonna get a uh, hinge cut from this spot right here. This is a buffer like I talked, don't get it too close. I've got plenty of good bedding, plenty of good room here and we're gonna need to keep it away from it, but we're creating that, that uh, line of movement. So can of paint is the next step we're going to create these center lines and we're going to tie them all into this uh this looking branch and then we're going to go up uh like i said this over top of this ridge so they can get in and out of the stand and we're going to put uh we're going to create these uh enhance these bedding areas do not start the the hinge cut too close to the uh to the mock scrape So now we're over top of the crown of the hill. The stand, you can see the ribbon way in the background. This is over top of the crown of the hill. The deer are gonna be down in here. So you're, you've got plenty of that cover. This is last year where we started this, this uh, hinge cut. And you can see uh, what this has done. You can see the, the growth just in a year's time. This one here um, was one of the ones we had to cut, actually cut off so I could get the other one to go. But this is the hinge hinge and you can see all this new regrowth and that's just from one that's just from one year so this uh the top of this all the way down through it's got just all kinds of uh, regrowth on it we've got some new hardwood regeneration right next to the stump right around it and then this starts where we were at last year with the hinge cuttings you can see behind me some of the, the hinge cutting that we started and we didn't uh, just because of the, the uh, time of the year that I had, I didn't go extreme with it. And you can see it's thick in here, but we need to create these corridors and tie the rest of this bedding area into it. So that's what we're going to work on today. But you can kind of see now the flow. And what I've done, like I said, I've created these. Um, we're going to open this up from here to there with a trail or a corridor to that licking branch. But we're not going to start that, that bedding until, until right in here. So we're now we're at that 75, 80 yards and uh, perfect comfort comfort area to get in and out of that stand. And this is the area where we're gonna be enhancing that. You can see some old uh, apple trees in here. We get this light in here that'll help that. We don't wanna you know, promote too much of that, that feed in here. We want them obviously to go out to that destination location, but good old uh, apple trees never hurt. So now what you can see here is we've got on these uh, these paths, what you're doing is like I said, you're just, you're making, they're pretty much foot paths guys, but obviously you're not gonna walk them. This is for the deer, so these are corridors. And these are, this is the center line that I just painted out. You can see, wraps all the way up and uh, it goes right over to that looking branch. So perfect, perfect example of a corridor. We just gotta get this, uh, this all this brush thrown back now and you'll see how it makes these paths in and out of here and you know you want to do these and then you want to kind of make sure where you've got them um you've got them at first and then you can uh, do your hinge cutting and related to that that way you can uh, come back and you know if you have to open these uh open them up get the a limb went over the top of them or whatever the case is uh to keep them clear but at least you got an idea on where you're starting from because if not you're, you're just you're uh you're cutting aimlessly you're blind and that's uh that's not a good not a good uh, situation all right guys so we just put a couple minutes of trimming in here and uh what you can see from last year we're adding on to this like i said so we're opening these corridors and we're adding on to these these bedding areas so what you can see last year we opened this this trail up right here 
we thinned it out a little bit and this was the first the center point the center of our of our corridor and what that is is the reason we did that is so now you can see the the edges are starting to get thicker and it's created this tunnel it's created a corridor right down to where we are standing now i just did as i step back here um we kind of rounded this off right to the licking branch is going to be right there and uh, this just turns comes around now and feeds right down through where this corridor is right behind us so as you can see it's a puzzle and it's just uh you know putting it all together but anything along here that you know if this in here we've got a lot of uh russian olive and and uh, autumn olive and just a bunch of nasty nasty stuff and uh, what's good about this chunk here is all the wood in this area that we're doing is undesirable and it's perfect for uh, hinge cutting problem is there's a lot of it that's up in the air um, luckily this area here had been cut you know before the owner bought this years ago and uh, so it does have a lot of low undergrowth but we're adding all these uh, softwood down into it got a lot of ash in here got a lot of soft maple and uh, so you can see this corridor comes and it ties right to the head of this um, right to the head of this licking branch now this licking branch situation a lot of guys will do is right from this corridor they'll start right here and start hinge cutting the problem is wherever you hinge cut you guys remember the the hinge cutting situation is for bedding so yeah just don't get caught in the trap of coming down here guys and in, in, in uh, you know hinge cutting that stuff too close to your your stand locations which puts us about a 80 yards 100 yards from our tree stand location over the crown of the hill like we were saying and we're going to enhance that's the area you can see some of it down in there um right in there you can see some of it that we created last year All right, so we just got a little uh, trimming done, and what you'll see is this is the topic of the six-foot hinge cut, guys. I'm six-six, and that six-foot hinge cut is horrible. It does nothing, and that's um, you don't need a tunnel for these deer. What you're trying to create is you're creating this side cover. This one here, it's an ash. I've got this uh, laid down, and that you can see, you know, there it's a little bit harder, three quarters of the way through, and we were able to uh, connect that. This one behind it is a dead one. That's going to be coming down too after I get some other stuff. But you'll see behind me now, i got the other camera set up, but you, you can see this corridor behind me is open and this is the head of where we're starting. So this one was kind of in the, um, this one was kind of in the uh, center of that, of the, uh, of the hub. So we just tilted it out and then the, the corridor, corridor goes out and around it and we'll just tie it together here. But I like to keep these as straight as you possibly can. You know in and out you don't want to have to take any any large uh large large trees down but uh, that kind of shows you that hinge cut right there is perfect you know that three foot off the ground and the reason is guys is this this hinge cutting fad is great but like i said a lot of these guys that aren't you know experienced enough to know the danger of these things are just taking this and seeing this stuff on youtube and and jumping on it and there's a lot of people out there getting hurt so what you want to do is um, in the logging world, they ca call it a barber chair and anything over your at your chest or at your head should never be hinge cut It should never be cut any anyhow uh, whether you're you're cutting it uh, for log or you're hinge cutting for Habitat or whatever, but this six-foot stuff that you see on on uh, line and, and everybody's talking on Facebook That's leading everybody around around the long wrong direction here is uh, is dangerous that that uh, that uh, uh, stump jumps or uh, that hinge comes loose at six foot with that much pressure it gets held up like a dead one behind it or something lets loose it cuts you right in the the chest or the uh, the face and it's just a dangerous deal and it serves no purpose being that high um, anybody that tells you a high hinge cut so the deer can walk underneath it is uh is blowing smoke at, at you and it's not um there to me there's no value in that it's it has to be side cover because now these deer these deer will be able to walk up to that and that hole that whole line not only the top if you cut it too high what you're doing is you're taking the the value of the the, the uh, bottom 
three quarters of this tree out of play and just the end of it's going to do uh, regenerate so what you're doing then is you're just creating a fact that all that rebrowse or that browse that's growing is going to be on the end this whole stem down through here as you can see in the other pictures i posted this whole trunk this whole tree is going to regenerate so if it's six foot in the air it does obviously that that regeneration is not going to go grow down it grows towards the sunlight so keep them low safety reason and habitat don't get your hinge cuts too high like i said anybody that tells you any difference lying to you um so we're going to go through and open some more of this up but you can see knock down a couple in here and uh just you know outside of this this uh, i always call it that directional hinge cut and uh create these corridors and tip everything to the outside and then when you come back your other corridor back towards your your hub it's all tilted to the outside as well so just a couple tips uh, set the cameras up here do some more cutting and uh it's kind of the the way that uh, these hub style um, bedding areas that i designed work and as you can see the tracks and the all the scrapes and the old beds and the rubs and everything that were in here from last fall and this was only just started last fall it wasn't completed so it's going to be a huge huge uh, deal this year for the the customer and uh look forward to seeing those uh that picture of that uh, good mature buck that he'll be sending it's uh it's going to happen on this parcel so it's so just one of those pieces that the more you add to it it's just it just keeps getting better so uh yeah we're gonna do some more cutting see what that looks like now underneath it and like i said you're not creating a canopy uh you're wanting this side cover so all these all this is side cover if you think about it guys when a deer is laying down they're all, they've only got they're only a foot 14 inches off the ground so all of this regrowth will all be chewed on i can go over to the spot here and show you that stuff that we did last year in the same spot what it looks like and it's just amazing how much food how much tonnage this puts so like i said not creating canopy laying them down thing is, is being able to have a plan have a strategy have a reason and uh, you can already see these this doesn't have any limbs on it you can see how much brighter it is already in here or leaves on it I'm sorry and uh, just having a plan just don't not go in and strip start just uh, cutting this year we're 60 yards from the the uh, neighbors um, fence line and if they try to come in from that side they're just only going to push the deer interior We've got side access into that stand. It's just winning, winning combination. So about a hour's worth of work. I'm going to show you what we've created. We're back here and uh, we've opened up the area where we want to put this licking branch. And we're going to continue on uh, down the trail here and we're going to show you what it looks like. Corridor coming to this uh, licking branch clean this out put the brush off to the side as you can see this is uh, what it looks like straight ahead of us corridor away from no, no hinge cut you can see there's no hinge cut here we're not promoting any beds we're not promoting any bedding area too close to the sand coming down this corridor you can see all the tracks As we get further away from the stand, this is the end of the hub, and this is where all of it starts. So you can see at the end here, guys, you can see low hinge cuts, all the side cover, open area we added to the thick we got uh, that we had last here. You can see here, this is some of this stuff here that I've got. I'm gonna go in and pull that down before I leave with the habitat hook. Just uh, get it down a little bit lower to the ground so it's not such a canopy, but you can see this real thick, thick line right in there. All the tops are down, all these, all this regrowth. That's the edge of that corridor and it goes right down to another trail that ties into another breading area across the creek. So just with an hour's worth of cutting, you can see how this is, but again, not off your corridors too close to the stand. You gotta create a hub 
so you promote that bedding far enough away from these stands so you can get in and out so hopefully uh, that kind of makes sense um, just like I said we had a quick afternoon here stopped by myself and uh, it's tough with one guy I'd recommend having two um, one guy running the saw one guy running the uh, a habitat hook surely helps you know pulling and, and directional pulling them and then when you get this thick on the ground um, where you you know you're enhancing more than what you did or on top of what you did last year a lot of that's pretty thick so you need a couple guys to help you smash it down but uh, yeah very very pow powerful tool but it can be pretty devastating done wrong so uh, get a hold of us we've got slots open um, for the rest of the winter here and going into early spring before uh, spring green up that we're going to be doing some more of these so uh, get a hold of us guys and we'll uh, come out and take a peek at what your ground see what we uh, what we need to do thanks